Hi, I'm here with the petitions that are going around the state in the defense of Gary Dotson's clemency petition. Mm -hmm. Patty Parker says she is just one of 2,000 people in Illinois and around the country gathering petitions asking Illinois Governor James Thompson to free Gary Dotson. Parker, once the victim of an assault herself, says nevertheless she believes Kathy Crowell Webb lied when she first told of being raped by Gary Dotson. Parker says she expects petitioners will gather as many as 10 to 20,000 signatures to present to the governor as he begins to consider the request for clemency filed by Gary Dotson's lawyer today. Warren Lupel told us several days ago that his request would be based on two reasons. One will be the fact that he is innocent and the basis upon which uh, we believe he's innocent, which we're certain he's innocent, which will involve a great deal of uh, evidence and what has gone on from the time of the original trial to uh, last week's hearing. Will this be new evidence? It will be an accumulation of evidence, some of which was presentable in court and other parts which are not presentable in court by reason of their nature. Uh, the second part of it and the alternative will be to seek a commutation of sentence which will be based upon the fact that he is not a danger to the community, that he has never committed a, a crime of any substance prior to uh, being convicted for this crime, that he has already served approximately two years longer than any other person similarly situated has ever served, and on that basis the sentence ought to be commuted to time served. Governor Thompson, a former prosecutor himself, says he will consider the case as soon as possible, but he will not allow public opinion to influence his decision. But public opinion can't play a part in this. It wouldn't be any more right to take somebody out of the penitentiary simply because of public opinion than it would be to see somebody go into the penitentiary because of public opinion. It needs a, a thorough and considered hearing away from the glare of public opinion for a while. I'll consider it as quickly as I can, but I'm not going to sacrifice the quality of the hearing before me to uh, demands for action. The uproar began when a Cook County, Illinois judge who had originally heard Kathy Crowell Webb accuse Gary Dotson of rape refused to believe her when she came back into his courtroom and said she had lied the first time. The judge's decision stunned both Gary Dotson's family and Kathy Webb. G Gary Dotson is innocent. He said you were lying. He suggested you were lying at the witness stand last week. I, what do you say to him? I have told the truth. I lied in 1979, and I'm telling the truth now, and that man is innocent. Webb's lawyer, John McClario, says Kathy Webb's troubled childhood was the reason behind the lie she told about being raped to the police and to the court six years ago. Kathy's troubles began early, says McClario. An alcoholic mother, a father who was granted custody of four-and-a-half-year-old Kathy after a bitter divorce, then dumped her with an elderly neighbor and left. Well, the first foster home that she went, was in uh, was a very troubled home. And uh, it was a situation where, her, where she was left there and she said for, uh, to have one dinner and she stayed there 10 years. Bitterly unhappy, Kathy ran away several times and was finally placed in a second foster home and two and a half years before the alleged incident with Dotson. It was the best home she had ever had in her lifetime and she wanted the security of it. She was an honor student, she had had friends, they would let her go out and play with other people. Uh, uh, she could take part in certain activities uh, that up until that time she had never had that privilege. Still, her foster parents were strict. McClario says they had told Kathy what would happen if she ever experimented sexually. And it's my understanding that Kathy said uh, on one occasion, and I'm not sure it's in the record and in the transcript, that if she was promiscuous, that this foster parent would ask her to leave the home. And this was a, would have been a very, very serious thing for her. But young Kathy Crowell did have sexual relations with her boyfriend. Terrified that she would become pregnant, McClario says the 16-year-old left work, ripped her clothes, scratched herself, and was on her way not to the police, but home to tell her foster parents that she had been raped. 
She never intended to report this to the police. She wanted to sneak home, tell her parents about it, and this was to be an excuse for her promiscuity uh, that, and her expectation that she may be pregnant. So now she was in a totally different scene that she didn't expect. Her lie had snowballed. Now the police were involved. Of course she was crying. Of course she was upset. She panicked. Now this was totally different, and she was putting on this act that could have been an act and it also could have been the panic that now the police were involved and here's a young girl who probably had never been involved with the police before in her lifetime. But the prosecutors interviewed by Judy Woodruff on the news hour last night say it was Kathy Webb's detailed description of the attack and the brutality of the attack that convinced them that she could not have made up the story about the rape. She told us how a car was driving in a circle around a light post uh, came and tried to run her down, uh, gave incredible details about an attack that then ensued where individuals uh, dragged her into a car, uh, caused a lot of injuries to her body, uh, destroyed her clothing, uh, raped her, uh, did other almost maniacal things to her, uh, laughing, uh, taking a jagged piece of glass and and scratching uh, letters or, or nonsensical words on her abdomen. This so-called brutal attack was a few scratches on her abdomen, a small scratch on the lower part of her body, and some torn clothing, and a bump on her head. It was so serious that the attending doctor at the hospital prescribed aspirin for her and some coal packs and nothing more. Though prosecutors did hesitate over a possible motive that would cause Kathy Webb to lie the second time. That's a very tough question and all of us have had trouble dealing with that. Uh, we all have some feelings on that, but that would be speculation, and we are not in a position of public responsibility to speculate. That. But McClario says Webb had a clear motive for coming forward with what she but says she, is the truth, uh, eight years after the incident years. allegedly took uh, place. And the reason for all this is, and why she's coming forward that nobody seems to understand, is she said very clearly that she trusted Christ as her savior. And this experience made her realize that she had to do what was right because she couldn't live with this lie and that her conscience continued to be pricked and continued to be until she just couldn't take it any longer and that she had to come forward. That conviction led Webb to take a lie detector test and call a news conference to publicly announce the results. I knew it was going to come out truthful because I was telling the truth. Support for Dotson has snowballed since. Gary Dotson's mother, Barbara Dotson, says she and her son have been cheered immeasurably by the oh, public support. Neighbors stop by continually to ask yeah, really what they can do. She thinks the public pressure will help. Now that we have the governor looking into it, I believe they'll find something there that shouldn't have been in the first place. I really have all, all hopes that it's going to finally come out. Whatever wasn't there in the beginning, they're going to find it. Yeah, I do really have high hopes that it won't be long. But Barbara Engels, who for the last 10 years has counseled women who have been the victims of rape, says if Gary Dotson is freed, it will become even harder for rape victims to testify than it is now. I think it has a chilling effect. It has a chilling effect on the reporting of rape because victims already come into the system feeling that they won't be believed. What if uh, Governor Thompson eventually decides to free Gary Dotson? I think Governor Thompson would be making a mistake because right now there's no legal basis for them to do this. There wasn't clear and convincing evidence, and I think they're right, there isn't clear and convincing evidence. It's a very muddy case, and he would only be bowing to public opinion. Though the man who was Cook County State's attorney at the time of Gary Dotson's trial and conviction now says the criminal justice system will be damaged if Dotson's sentence is not commuted. Whatever the criminal justice system shows, that it is so rigid and so tight that it cannot free someone with equal vigor that it prosecutes and convicts someone that we suffer. So the debate continues to rage while petitions continue to circulate. Some say the real truth may never be known. Others say it has already been heard. All agree that the case, Illinois governor has a very tough decision ahead of him.